when I was first getting familiar with this low carb community, because remember, I'm not, I'm, I'm a professor and a scientist. I was totally unaware of this whole community of, uh, at the time, just kind of low carb, um, if not advocates, then enthusiasts or, or travelers, you know, along the path of learning more about it. Then I was invited to speak at this a first lay meeting. And then it was the year or so later when I think you and I met at the Metabolic Health Summit. But one of those early talks I gave was to dispel the idea of protein being a problem on a ketogenic diet. It, were, it was very odd to me um, to see as an outsider, as just a pure scientist, people saying, well, don't eat too much protein because you don't want to get kicked out of ketosis. And I just thought, what an odd concern, um, especially in the context of a low carb diet, because a lot of the evidence has shown that the insulinogenic response to a dietary protein load really depends on the underlying glucose level. So to put that very clearly, if someone eats a protein load in the absence of glucose and they have normal glucose levels, there is little to no insulin release. This is very uh, Nuttall, N-U-T-T-A-L, uh, through a series of experiments, really um, nailed this uh, and, and displayed it really well. So again, if a person eats a pure load of protein in the absence of any glucose and they have normal glucose levels at the time, there's very little insulin spike. If a person takes that protein with glucose or has underlying hyperglycemia, then you will get an insulin spike and you will amplify it beyond the carbohydrate alone. And that's really in part because of what the body has to do to keep gluconeogenesis happening. If you're fasted or on a ketogenic diet, if you spike insulin, you stop gluconeogenesis and you would become hypoglycemic very quickly and you would likely go unconscious. And so that makes sense that the body won't elicit an insulin spike because if it did, again, it would shut off the liver's ability to make new glucose. And so you can't sustain it. But that does present a bit of a note of caution as much as you and I both are big advocates of protein and I am. Um, and I made this whole talk on YouTube, the in, um, insulin to glucagon ratio when it comes to protein consumption, um, where I presented some of these ideas. If a person has type 2 diabetes, they actually may find that controlling protein a little bit is helpful um, in that population. But, uh, you know, th there's a lot of nuance there. But on, you know, on average, I'm an enormous advocate of protein. Even if there is an insulin bump, it is a macronutrient that I'm tremendously in favor of. Now, having said that, lest someone misinterpret it, I'm an advocate of natural protein, um, especially, which is the protein that comes, it's always going to be animal. Natural protein is animal source protein. And natural protein always has fat. There's almost no instance in nature of a protein not coming with fat. And I believe that's how we should consume it. We do have human evidence to show that if a human a population of humans works out, they eat um, protein, they get a certain greater degree of muscle protein synthesis. If they eat protein and fat, they get even more muscle protein synthesis. Part of this could be because of what um, uh, the, the the assistance of bile. As much as we think of fat digestion and we think of bile coming from the liver than the bile duct or the, the gallbladder as being only relevant to fat consumption, and it is very important for fat consumption, but we also use bile to accelerate the proteolytic enzymes of digestion in the, in the gut. So we have these distinct class of enzymes, the proteolytic enzymes that help with protein digestion. We have bile and then some fat specific enzymes to help with fat digestion, but bile also facilitates the actions of the proteolytic enzymes. And I don't think it's an accident, again, that in nature, all fats come with protein. In our fear of fat, we have separated the two. And I think that's why a lot of people, if they find they just take pure protein, it really upsets their intestines. They probably because they're losing out on the facilitative actions of the bile, which helps protein digestion, but you're only gonna be releasing the bile if you eat some fat.